PPME, which is property, plant, and equipment. All right, some company includes land into this segment, but we see here lumber is dividing land um, away from PPME. Now we see where that has increased from $80 million to $131 million. So there's a $131 million increase. I mean, $130 million increase in property plant and equipment, and that's a 621% increase. Again, this seems like expansion to us. The business is expanding, right? Because you see where these property plant and equipment and land companies getting all of that. Now, rights of use assets. And what this means is that the company has leased some assets that it is using, all right? So we see where they have to carry this on their balance sheet. All right, and there's a new accounting rule that tells you how to deal with the right of use assets. All right. So once upon a time, the accounting rule, there's two ways you can record rights of use assets. You have what you call the finance lease, and you have what you call the operating lease. All right. Now the finance lease is really when a company is purchasing an asset, but it is doing that over a period of time. All right, so it is all, it's almost like the layaway plan. All right, so like you're, um, you're doing a layaway plan where you're purchasing something, but you're doing it over a specific period of time. The finance lease, because you're purchasing the asset, it is a requirement that you present those assets on the balance sheet. Because you're purchasing the asset when you're using the finance lease. All right, it is always required that you carry those assets on your balance sheet. All right, because you're you're the owner of the asset in a sense. All right. So with finance lease, what you normally find happening is that there is a line item on the balance sheet that you record the lease asset, the value of the lease asset, or the amount of money that you owe on the lease, all right, as asset. Now, when with the operating lease. All right, this is not a purchase of the asset. This does not amount to you purchasing the asset or the company purchasing the asset. What it amounts to is you and the company renting the asset. All right. So because of this, the company is not required to carry the asset, the value of the asset on the balance sheet because it's not the company's asset. The company is just using the asset. All right. So it's the off balance sheet item, all right? So if it's an operating lease, that would not affect the balance sheet of the company. However, in recent times, we're seeing where the accounting rule has changed, all right? And you're now required to carry both your finance lease and your operating lease. Those assets must be recorded on the balance sheet. All right, so if it's a finance lease or if it's an operating lease, the accounting rule now states that you have to carry both of the assets on the balance sheet. And that has implications for your profit and loss statement. All right, so whatever time we are doing any of these, I will see where companies are, um, have their I will see your companies have their operating lease or their finance lease, all right? And you will see where they record it in their profit and loss statement. It will show you how those affect the profit and the loss statement, all right? So right here, we'll see where the rights of use asset was $72 million in 2021, and it was near in 2022. All right, so what has happened here is that a company, Lumber Depot, has purchased the 
asset that it has leased. So the building that Lombard Depot um, operates from was a leased building, right? So the company leased the building for a period of time. And recently the company decided to just purchase the building from the owner, all right? So that is now why you're seeing rights of use asset decreasing to middle. So you see that coming off the balance sheet and you see that the company property plans and equipment has increased and that the company land has increased. So what the company do was to separate the building and the equipment from the land. All right, so it records them separately. But it's the same lease asset that the company is recording. One other thing that you must notice is that the value all right, of the change in the land and the property plant and equipment is greater than the rights of lease asset. All right, so the land value plus the change in land value plus the change in the property plant and equipment would equal to about $163 million. However, the rights of lease asset was just $72 million. And that is because the steel price of the lease asset is different from the lease amount, all right, the value of the lease asset. So when they are selling the asset to the company, they sell it at a premium price. And that is the reason why you see where you see the difference between the rights of lease assets and the difference in the land and the property plant and equipment. 